I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. It's just me, Keith. Dom is off, but we're sharing Dominic's interviews with the cast of Rebel Moon Part 2. At the end of this, this is going to be a real short intro since this is not your regular Hard Knock Life episode. I thought about, and maybe this is going to be a future episode, taking a stroll down the Snyderverse after watching both parts of Rebel Moon and, and kind of contemplating Zack Snyder's filmography. It will probably require a, a deeper dive once we regroup as a podcast. But, you know, th- that could be for the future. I didn't do a lot over the weekend. Um, there was the NBA playoffs I was paying attention to, kind of. Was also listening nonstop to Pearl Jam's latest album, Dark Matter, that dropped on Friday. That's that's the one I chose. I know Taylor Swift also released a record. But in the Barbenheimer of music, I chose Pearl Jam. I've been a fan of Pearl Jam since I was a kid. I probably talked about it on this podcast and on other podcasts. The, looking at you, Jamie Noguchi. This is not a music podcast. I won't go too deep, but I'm a big fan of the new record. I listened to it nonstop over the weekend, like I said. One thing I will point out is that there is a song that I think a lot of Pearl Jam fans and, and a lot of people are criticizing, rightly or wrongly, called Something Special, which Eddie wrote about his daughter's. And it's very much a dad rock song, but I I sobbed listening to it the first time. And I wondered if it's because I grew up with the band. I've been a fan of Pearl Jams for three decades since I was a kid in high school. And when I was 14 years old, my favorite song from Pearl Jam was a song about unrequited love because I was a moody, angsty teenager. And now in my late 40s, my favorite band's latest record my favorite song is about a dad who's seeing his daughter grow up and and enter adulthood and and the emotions that are tied to that so that's just a quick little recap of my feelings of the new Pearl Jam record not that that's why you tune into Hard Knock Life another cool thing over this weekend I was watching the stream (laughs) talk about my eclectic music taste I was watching the stream for Coachella and particularly Atarashi Gakko's performance, they headlined the Gobi stage, which is one of the small side stages, but the fact that this Japanese pop group actually headlined any of the stages is already a big deal, and I've talked about on this podcast how they're one of the most interesting and fun bands, groups, music artists out there, and their profile is just getting bigger and bigger. The fact that they killed it at Coachella is is proof of that. One thing I will point out is that the YouTube stream, which was cool. This is my first time ever watching a, a stream of Coachella or any kind of music festival. It's a cool option to have when, you know, you can't go to those kinds of festivals. But I will say that I wish that whoever was directing the stream had a better sense of who the artists are. Because like I said, I didn't see anybody else's performance. I only watched Atarashi Gakko. But clearly the cameraman or the, the director has no idea about who they are, what their music is, what their choreography is supposed to be, because it would cut away whenever something cool was about to happen on stage and cut to like some disinterested person in the audience and then cut back when their choreography was done. And like, if and you know anything about Atarashi Gaka, one of the coolest things about their live performances is the energy they give and their intricate choreography. So either the camera was zoomed in on one person when she wasn't singing and then it would cut away when she would start singing. It was a mess. It's better the second weekend than the first weekend, but whoever's directing the Coachella stream, just to have a better sense of who the artists are and then <laughs> give the people what they want. But again, the fact that we've been able to watch it live was was pretty cool. Anyway, this episode is going to be more dedicated to Rebel Moon. We'll talk about the Deadpool trailer next week when Dominic's back and have a lot to say about that. But for now, we're going to play his interviews with the cast of Rebel Moon starting off with the director, Zack Snyder, followed by a conversation with the two main villains, Ed Screen and Fra Free. I believe that's how you say his name. He also talked to Staz Nair, Elise Duffy, and Jaimon Hansu, which was a really fun interview. It was Jaimon Hansu's birthday, I think in a couple of days. By the time you listen to this, it might even be his birthday. 
And so when Dominic interviewed them, he brought it up and Jaimon went on a long <laughs> diatribe about birthdays in general. And it was a really interesting conversation. And we wrap it up with the two heroes of the film, Sophia Batella and Mikhail Huisman. Yeah, Rebel Moon, uh, <laughs> it's a Zack Snyder movie. And uh, take with that what you will. It's also an original Zack Snyder movie. One thing looking back at his filmography, and like I said, this may be grounds for a, a deeper, larger conversation in the future. But most of the films in his filmography have been adaptations of existing IP. You know, his big breakout film, of course, was Dawn of the Dead, which was a remake of a George Romero movie. And then he followed that with 300, a graphic novel adaptation, and then Watchmen. And of course, the DC films, or the DCEU films, Watchmen, of course, is a DC film. But then his original movies are Sucker Punch. I guess Army of the Dead is, can be considered an original movie. I feel like it's more of a spiritual sequel to uh, Dawn of the Dead, but whatever. And of course, Rebel Moon. And one thing that I think is clear when you compare his adaptations of IP to his original IP, one, the limitations are the same. The strengths are the same. Of course, he's always, he's much more of a visual artist than, than necessarily a storyteller. And what the difference is with his original films like Sucker Punch and, and the Rebel Moon movies is that when you don't have the prior knowledge to fall back on, when you like know who Rorschach is or you know, Batman and Superman say what you will about how he quote unquote deconstructs them. At least you have that iconography to fall back on when it's wholly original characters telling a quote unquote original story. That's it's, it's tough. And I know rebel moon was kind of his stab at a star Wars movie to Lucasfilm allegedly. And you know, it wears its star Wars on its sleeve. It wears its Akira Kurosawa on its sleeve, but man, (laughs) <laughs> there's a lot there so anyway i don't want to get too deep into it you know it's one movie that gets overlooked in the snyder filmography of course my favorite film in Zack snyder's oeuvre is michael jordan's playground and we need to talk about that vhs tape that i owned back in 1991 i want to say one of the most iconic michael jordan highlight tapes ever made not a lot of people know Zack snyder made that movie he filmed, no, he didn't make the highlights, of course, but he filmed the framing story where Michael visits an inner city kid playing in, in basketball in, in the playground and, and one of the most iconic posters of all time. Anyway, if I ever get a chance to talk to Zack Snyder, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about like how he came on that project, what it was like working with Michael Jordan. But, you know, the, the beginning of the Snyderverse starts inside Michael Jordan's playground. But whether or not you want to go check out Rebel Moon, you know, we talked a little bit about this last week and Dominic and Zach talk a little bit about the director's cuts that are forthcoming. The movies I think on Netflix now stand at about two hours, two and a half, maybe each. There are three hour director's cuts coming for both films. And you'll hear this in the interview with Zach. Rubber moon was supposed to be one movie anyway, and he just cut it in half. And that's, I think part of the issue with the, with the movies though, watching them back to back, it didn't make it any better. But they don't feel like complete movies anyway. It does feel like when he says to Dominic, I just chose the very middle of the script and cut it there. It was like, oh, man, I mean, that, that kind of now makes sense. But whatever. Um, not sure if I'm, I'm getting you guys excited to want to listen to these interviews. I think the interviews themselves are fan, are fascinating. Anytime you get to talk to the cast and filmmakers of anything, whether or not you like the final product is always interesting. But... That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening to this very short, very special, <laughs> condensed version of Hard Knock Life. We'll be back in full next week. Got a lot to talk about. The Deadpool trailer bringing back Wolverine, and we got to see Hugh Jackman. I'm lukewarm on Deadpool as a franchise, um, so I'm probably not the best person to talk about it, but you'll hear our thoughts in full next week. But until then, check out Dominic talking to Zack Snyder and the cast of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. And then follow the Nerds of Color on all platforms at the Nerds of Color and check out Hard Knock Life at hardknockmedia.com. Like, subscribe. If you want to see the video versions of these interviews, they are on YouTube. So go to youtube.com slash the Nerds of Color. You can actually see 
Dominic interacting with the cast of Rebel Moon. But if you want to just hear it, if you're in, you got your earbuds in and you're driving somewhere, here is Dominic Ma talking to Zack Snyder and the cast of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. And until next time, this has been Hard Knock Life. Uh, Hard Knock Media, and I'm here with uh, Zack Snyder to talk about Rebel Moon. It's very nice to meet you today. How nice are to you? meet you. Love the voice, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I have an okay speaking voice. Um, I, 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 so I read just a little bit about the uh, the filming process of Rebel Moon, so forgive me, but I wanted to know, did you shoot them both at once, or is there like a complete part one? And no, no, we shot them all way? together as a single, super long, and they're all like, it, it mostly movie two happened at the end of the schedule and movie two at the beginning, but there was a little bit of, um, there was a little crossover. Okay. Okay. I mean, because we think of like the second ones, like the great, you know, second ones in, in empire Godfather two or whatever. Do you just have a different approach when you think about the second one? Like... Well, I had written it as a single story. So it was really, okay. I just, I took the script and cracked it in half. Oh, okay. Right on. Um, well, what I wanted to ask was like, I mean, it's such a it's a large scale, a lot of things happening at once. What's your at the end of a shooting day or any day in the in the process? What's your favorite part of the filmmaking process? Like the actor thing or a design thing makes you happiest when yeah, you're done. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, because um, it's such a it became such a um, such a labor in the sense that because I was the DP and the director and the producer and the writer. It's a very, um, very immersive process. Uh, uh, and I, I, I honestly think kind of my favorite part of the day, I mean, I love shooting and I love working with the actors. My son directed the second unit um, on the movie, mm. Eli, and uh, he and I would ride into work together and then we'd ride home at the end of the day. And there was always like hilarious banter and ranting that would go on between us on the way in and on the way out based on what happened during the day. Um, Cause he'd be off shooting something and I'd be shooting. And then we'd come back together and talk wow. about it. And so that was always a really, it was, it's like a very rare thing. And, you know, because he's my son and, you know, he understands my sense of humor and everything like that. So the download of the day was always really uh, quite uh, hilarious and fun. So yeah, that, that was probably kind of oh, some excellent. of my favorite parts of the day was that it's kind of living the dream, having your son, uh, working with your son and kind of being able to kind of have someone that really understands exactly the the, the stresses of the day, you know, because he's basically doing the same thing. So it was fun. Yeah, a family moment to go with this huge project. I mean, yeah. wow, that's fascinating. Um, I did read somewhere there was a – did it start as a video game concept at some point? And are you doing it, it started as a story. It started as a movie. It turned into a video game at one point. Um, and then it kind of went back to being a movie again. So it, it, oh, it was a TV show for a while, then it became a movie. But I feel like in its, in its most recent iteration, it, um, it, it definitely uh, took on a sort of life of its own. It was, it, even though I trace its origins back to these other sort of what it was, it definitely, once we started to build it, it really, it really you know, kind of, once the world was kind of in the mythology was kind of filled in, all the questions got answered by the sort of interior universe. So it was very much its own. Hmm. It would answer its own questions at some at one point. It got to the point where it did, but it took a little bit of time. But like once we had like all the design language figured out and all that, like any question you'd have about the movie, you could just look into the mythology that we created and it would answer it. So it was it was kind of that that was kind of fun. Right on. Um, it. If you had a choice, like you do, as I said, you split the movie in two. Like, would would you favor uh, like uh, just movies being any length in movie theaters? I'm just curious, like, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Um, like, if economics weren't the con weren't the concern. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, for instance, I mean, Justice League. My cut of Justice League is four hours, of course, and, but there is an intermission. Um, so that's always that's always a, a I think that's always a kind. Uh, thing when there's an intermission if you're going to do a long movie um the director's cuts of rebel moon are both three hours each uh so um but you know 
I, I think that, you know, you go to a movie like Oppenheimer and it goes by pretty fast. I don't think you, you don't feel like, you know, um, you know, you need, uh, you need any kind of an intermission necessarily. Um, and also, you don't, you're not, I, I don't think length, length to me is not a thing that I really take into consideration once it's over three hours, though, I think you're starting to talk about just the practicality of being sitting for three hours, you know, so it's yeah. nice to... No, sure, I was just envisioning in some future world, maybe we'll be able to sit and watch the whole four-hour version, the whole six-hour version, kind of like in, in its best possible form, maybe. I don't know, it's just a thinking... No, no, it's always question. fun. I, I think that's an uh, incredible experience. I mean, we've been talking about when the director's cuts come out, doing like a back-to-back -back double feature screenings uh, somewhere. So like, you know, that would require... You know, a little bit of a break between the movies, maybe to right, right. have a snack and Logistically. grab a couple shots of tequila or whatever it is. Totally. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, great. It was really nice to meet you. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here to talk about Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, uh, with two of the actors. How are you doing today? Yeah, it's good, nice to meet buddy. you. Yeah, very good. Nice to meet you too, sir. Great. Is it fair to say you're the villains? Yeah, are we comfortable I saying that? Yeah. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I don't I think, think we need to have an ambiguous discussion yeah. about that. Yes. No, we're the good guys in the piece. You know? <laughs> are we really the bad guys? No, we're the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah bad. no, because there, there's what your personal motivation as a character is. But in the movie with these kind of archetypes, how do you approach being on being the villains? Is there a mindset or a, you know, I mean, a physical idea? I mean, every villain is, you know, like every character is definitely going to be different. The interesting motivation that I had for this, which was different from every other villain I've ever played, is I didn't want any humanity. I didn't want mm. anything empathetic. Usually I try to really push it like, okay, how like how much can I get you on side? How much can I get you to understand me so that you're actually like, nah, I'm with the bad guys. Like, I actually, I get his motivation. In, yeah. I could be him. With Noble, I wanted the opposite of that. And mm. I was thought that was an interesting thing to try to do and I was excitedly worried about it because I thought this could backfire mm. like usually the thing that's worked with my villains in the past is that I made them empathetical yeah. so there was some nuance to them and I was like I really hope this doesn't make him like a 2D flat mm. villain um, I don't think he was thankfully but um, you can be the judge of that but um but like, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to, to, to just remove all humanity and, and see what happened. And to be honest, when I watch it, I don't see any humanity in him. I don't yeah. see anything <laughs> that I can relate to. And I don't even... There's a little spot on your collar, but this is just a tiny bit of humanity. Like, yeah. No, I mean, I think you did that very effectively. Yeah. I mean, would you like to... Sorry, for would you like to talk about oh, Gary yeah, sorry. And being a villain thing? Um, That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, I... Yeah. Um... Uh, I, I can't uh, say that I did the same as Ed in this instance. Like, I think it, <laughs> just to, to commend Ed's amazing performances, no, but it's, it's, it's sort of wonderfully gruesome to just see evil in all of its forms because we know how far it can go. And I think Noble's drive was just, was just pure evil, to be honest. Balasarius, I suspect, is a bit different. With the chats that I had with Zach, he came from much more modest beginnings in a, in a different planet, hence why he speaks with his <laughs> Northern Irish accent. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's, an out, he's an outsider in this world. And through manipulation and uh, through um, grooming with Cora, certainly weaponizing her to or in order for him to achieve things that he feels he is wholly entitled of and was denied as someone that grew up in a much more modest um, beginnings. To get to a position of mm. incredible power, he's the most powerful person in the universe. Um, so I just sort of lent into that feeling of entitlement um, and feeling as though he's absolutely worthy of it. And those are things that you could we can as humans actually just sort of tap into it's like okay i can understand mm. this person's motivations but you are 
definitely one of the most entitled people I've ever met. <laughs> and evil, yeah, actually. Like, <laughs> evil and entitled. He's just a really yeah, gross, yeah. Just a, gross person. Just turn on the camera. Yeah. Not gross, yeah. just evil and entitled. <laughs> just stop there. Now, I'm only joking. He's the <laughs> yeah. loveliest man <laughs> ever. You can see that. <laughs> I say well, that to defend you from the fact that okay. I am evil and gross yeah, under course. the surface, but doing a really good job of hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was very insightful. Now I'm a little Thank bit scared. Thank so you, man. We'll wrap up there. I've been, hard, uh, been Dominic with the Hard Knock Media. Good luck with everything. It was very nice to meet Thank you. you. Thank you, so sir. You've got a fantastic voice. Yes. Yeah. I was like insane. Thank you. Voice. Well, oh my gosh, that means a lot coming from all you. I'm Dominic Ma, and I'm with uh, Hard Knock Media, and we're here today to talk about uh, Rebel Moon, especially part two with some of the uh, cast members. How are you doing today? It's nice to meet you. Very well, great, Dominic. Great. Thank, Thank you. you for asking. Great. Um, and I hope it's okay to ask this, but um, is it someone's birthday soon this month, uh, according to IMDb? Is that oh. all right to ask? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good to realize. <laughs> It took me a minute. I, yeah. I mean, in a couple of weeks, according to IMDb, so I yes. know that's... Indeed. Happy, happy birthday. Uh, yeah, and birthday. this one is quite uh, quite special. I've uh, rarely ever had the... Uh, you know, I mean, I, being raised in Africa, uh, birthdays are not necessarily... You know, I mean... Mm. We don't celebrate birthdays the same way. I certainly did not, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it took forever to, for me to sort of have a Celebr birthday, birthday celebration. celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was quite, uh, you know, over the 40s when I, uh, you know, oh. the first time what were they being more said like? uh, happy birthday. Huh? What, what, what was more the... What well, was it was just that uh, it's not something that, um, you know... Um, that I was used to, and it was not something that um, we oftentimes celebrate, given the fact that, you know, uh, coming from Africa, the, the, the idea of uh, uh, needs to survive and uh, mm -hmm. supersede that. Supersede right. all of that. Right, so, okay. uh, who is celebrating a birthday, and where are you getting yeah. money to celebrate Do birthday? You know? what's, the, what's, the, what's the idea of celebration, really? And uh, was, that, was that innately part of? Where you were from, like in, in Africa, or is that is that a mentality you think leads out to the continent, or was it within no, your family it, specifically? It, it was a mentality specifically given my, uh, you know, the nature of my, uh, you know, uh, of me simply uh, uh, not having a family, and uh, suddenly we, we don't cater to sort of like a, mm -hmm. you know, sort of this life, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we it's. Yeah, I mean, I was just brought. I, I was not brought up like that, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, with the attention that every year you were, you know, you, you acknowledge that we acknowledge your birthday, and then, I mean, I was already thirty, over thirty-three years well, old when, when I you started. That first well, happened. It actually, I'm first sorry, happened I in Afghanistan. I did not even mean to put you on this. No, spot. but no, anyway, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just but just anyway, your podcast, man. <laughs> I yeah. think because because uh, I've grown up with you, Mr. Tunsu, on TV or film, and it's just an honor to meet you. So Absolutely. I just want to acknowledge that. Oh, saying, thank you. I happy appreciate birthday, that. Happy birthday, the right village, whether it's thank ER you. or uh, Stargate or this movie, Blood yeah. Moon. Uh, sorry, I said Blood Moon, but I meant Rebel Moon because <laughs> there's an eclipse, so there's a lot of moon stuff going on. Yeah. Please, just... Much reason much reason retrograde. We got, we got this. <laughs> Uh, it's all confusing. Please just uh, tell me, oh God, tell me your your favorite karaoke song <laughs> because we're running out of time. <laughs> oh, just us yeah, we just talked about that. We were just talking, just talking about, about that. that. Oh and God. she has one. No. <laughs> what I, I, I what, yeah. Go on, go on. <laughs> I think I have one too, but it's a uh, it, it it's a Bob Marley track, which I can't remember exactly the uh, uh, the title of the Sing track. It for us. But it's. It, 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 <laughs> So don't go there. Uh, but oh, it's really, song, it's really instrumental and vocal. Okay. It's all okay. instrumental, Great. and I think it's one of the few uh, tracks that he has that really speaks volume of, uh, uh, you know, political tentacles that's sort of holding us back. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I say when I say us, and when I'm speaking of the continent of Africa, and so in that, mm -hmm. in that respect, the the, the story. Rebel Moon resonates vividly with me, you know, um, mm, in terms absolutely. of story. Yeah, yeah. 
Anyways. Well, briefly, just to finish out the thread, what, what are your favorite karaoke songs? I know you have like 10 karaoke songs. And he's Give got us. quite no? a few. I have no? my favorite. It would have to be something by Queen. I would have to. It would really okay. depend Great. on the day. But my, usually it would be something by Queen or. I'm going to stick with Queen. I can't think of anything good. Yeah, I like my Queen. Yeah. Okay. I did Hotel California the other day. Fair enough. And I was loving it. Marvelous. I mean, there's just That's so much going song. on. Yeah. It's a great song. Yeah. Marvelous. These, these are the songs of the people. Yeah. It's the, uh, these are the people saying, say, uh, fight the mother world, as it were. Um, okay. Uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you, well, Dominic. Uh, good luck with everything. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm with Sophia, and don't let me say your name wrong. Is it Michelle or Michael? Mikiel. Mikiel. I was going to say it wrong, so thank you for don't, don't helping worry me out. Uh, it's very nice to meet you today. How, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, good. We're excited for uh, part two co to, to come out. Are, are you fans of uh, Magnificent Seven and Seven Samurai? Uh, from which it draws a lot of cues. I'm a big Magn Magnificent Seven person. Mm. Yeah, then I would say I'm more of a Seven Samurai guy. I and I I watched it really for this movie. I hadn't seen it before, and and I I, you know I'm, I was I was in awe. Uh, Sophia, I've been a big fan of yours since you were in that Star Trek movie directed by Justin Lin. I'll just say. <laughs> um, could you talk a little bit? I read a little bit about. Is, is it true that? Uh, Sophia, I think you have a big dancing background, and Mikhail, you are a musician as well. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I assumed you were actually both those things, but I didn't want to like pigeonhole people. It can only be one thing. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering, uh, to me, like, uh, I was wondering if you could talk about how, like, those art disciplines inform or lend themselves to when you're doing, like, a big science fiction adventure thing where you have a lot of, like, action scenes, basically. I mean... Mm -hmm. Because I, I like to say, like, Snyder has a certain, like, his the action moments have, like, a lot of, there's a certain rhythm to it. There's a lot of build-up and release. Could you speak about how those uh, music and dance may affect those kind of uh, things when you're making the movie? Uh, from, for me, dancing affects everything I do creatively. But even, in, in when, even when it doesn't come to creative uh, subjects. But I, uh, yeah, for me, the rhythm of the character is very important. The posture and 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 I owe that to dance to the ability I think to to have a to have an eye for these things and it, it helps me in everything that I do when I'm when I'm on set even when it has to do with something that has nothing to do with sequences just the way my character sits walk and 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 the body in relationship to the space and in relationship to others mm -hmm. and especially in a movie like that that includes a lot of 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 fight sequences, I was able to to pull from all my years of training as a dancer and all the discipline that comes with it, and um, and yeah, and what it represents for in order to deliver certain 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 things. I knew what to ask my body and where to go and like um, yeah, how to discipline myself in order to achieve that. It was so evident to all of us on set whenever we were uh, working uh, or whenever Sophia was working on some stunts uh, to to. See see her in between takes and go through the motions and the way she would block it for herself, um, I don't know, to me it was very evident that, it, that, you know, your background as a dancer really helps you there and, yeah. and informs the way you approach that. Yeah. Yeah. I, really I, cool. I mean, I think it comes across in the movie, they're, they're very well composed scenes and like, yeah, yeah they have a great time. <laughs> uh, a great grace and style to them. Um, well, so we'll have to wrap up soon, but it was really nice to meet you, the heroes, as it were, of uh, Rebel Moon 2, and uh, good luck with uh, everything. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.